Hey there guys, Winio here, and welcome back to Let's Play Fallout New Vegas. Ah, <sighs> what were we doing last time? Well, I'm not 100% sure, but, um, oh, that's right, we're helping the ghouls collect their uh, pieces that they need for their rocket ships, and with the rockets and the ships and the bit pop that's not my Bill Cosby, don't, don't, don't get confused and think that's my Bill Cosby, that was not my Bill Cosby, my Bill Cosby is a lot better than that, but oh well, anyway, moving on. Old man peeping in a window. <laughs> Says the man creeping in someone's window. Uh, empty dumpsters. What the hell? What can I do for you? Are you important or something? Um. Bye. I guess it's just a traveling doctor. Interesting. Very interesting. So let's go find those rocket parts. I don't even know which parts we're getting still. Or. Well, I remember we got the uh, the thing off the guy in the yellow suit, but now we're headed for something else. And I don't know if it's uh, going to be easy or difficult or whatever. Hopefully it's easy. I guess we'll find them here. Gibson Scrapyard! Woohoo! I see an old lady and a bunch of dogs. Hi there! I'm old lady Gibson, or so they tell me. I've got odds and ends for sale, and I'm pretty good at fixing things, too. I'm sure. You might have noticed the very large building just north of here. That's Helios 1. The NCR runs the place, so it's off limits to prospectors. I kind of want to be a prospector now. Just putting that out there. Okay, um, hmm. Do you have any thrust control modules? As it so happens, I do have some thrust modules. But they're expensive. 500 caps worth of expensive. Fuck. <laughs> and of course, my speech and barter are not high to get either bonus from this. Well, that sucks. Fine. Pleasure doing business with you. I hate you, lady. Just let me know that. I could have killed her and made off with that thing, but I'll be nice for now. La Fantama! Sorry. Just caught my eye on that loading screen. Is the thing down here? Yeah, it's down here. So hopefully now we are finally done with this quest. And I can level up and put points where they need to be put and all sorts of crazy things. And we can move on. I'm tired of dealing with ghouls in this place. And this guy. This guy's an asshole. Have you found the components we discussed? See, total dick. Indeed you did. And they seem to be in excellent condition. The rockets are set to go, right? Yes. I'll tell Jason that the great journey can begin. Alright. We have everything we need to launch the rockets, Jason. The great journey can begin. Gather all. May the Creator guide my words and help me speak true. The Almighty Creator has seen fit to answer our prayers. The time has come for us to board the rockets and begin the great journey. Though it may seem that all humans despise us, the Creator has seen fit to instruct us differently. The journey ahead would have been impossible if not for the intercession of two human friends. One you, the other a long abiding companion. To our new friend, we say thanks and promise never to forget how he cleared from our path the demons who sought to stay our journey. But to Chris, we owe more than thanks. Chris, you have made this great journey a reality. From this moment forward, you will be remembered as the saint of the great journey. We shall never forget you. I ask that you forgive us, Chris, and give us your blessing, and we bestow ours upon you. Seekers, board the rockets. Take your seats. The great journey awaits. To the promised land we go. To the far beyond. Hello. Hey. Hello. Hey. <laughs> God, you were right all along. I'm no ghoul. You were 
just using me. Told you. They take you if they could, Chris, but you die. And dying would be worse than this? Used up and thrown away like garbage. I'm going to fear you as a saint, Chris. Oh, so I've redeemed the human race, is that it? What a crock. The human race can't stand me. That's not true, Chris. You're a dick. Leave me alone. Everyone else does. Sure. You want to stay down here? Be my guest. Actually, we gotta head up to the launch platform and watch it. You know, I would shoot him and put him out of his misery, but yeah. I feel like that's a little too old west. You know, someone gets the downs, the blues, and starts moping about. In the old west, that's what we'd do. We'd shoot him. I would know. I'm about 500 years old. I know I don't talk about it much, but as an LP, -er, I have lived uh, quite a long time, and let me tell you, the Old West was rough. Like I said, I kind of want to be a prospector now. Find a prospector hat and some overalls, go around going like, -hoo -hoo -hoo! and like, you know, doing quests like that. I would sleep, but I don't need health. Let's get out of here. It's an <laughs> odd noise, it's very squishy stairs. Okay, viewing platform. Engage! This isn't a viewing platform. You're not a viewing platform. I guess through here. I don't know. Damn. What the hell did they do? Water down the stairs before I came through this place? Like, hold on, we gotta make it extra squishy. I see a computer. Just landed on some squishy ass floor, too. Cake! Are you kidding me? We've been playing at Martin's party for months now, and you forgot to order the cake? There's no way we're gonna find some place to deliver one out here at this kind of notice. Get to the break room, go and find some for everyone to eat at the party. Gordon. Gordon? Weren't you supposed to be in a test chamber half an hour ago? This isn't a viewing platform either. Well, what the fuck, man? I'm a viewing platform. Oh, it's probably up where they were. You know. Place that's high up. I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. I'm a doofus. More dead people lying about. Seems to be the norm with this place. Ew. They're like giblets were rolling around when I walked in. At least I'm not like dealing with any squishy stairs lately. Navigation console. Console seems to have something to do with the course plotter for the rocket, but can't make heads or tails of how it works. Aw, oh, you can change the outcome if you have enough science. That sucks. Oh well. Enough news of your good works have been passed around that people like you. Come fly with me, let's fly, let's fly away. And we level up from that. Oh my god! And I still got this music playing too from the launch. Anyway, oh uh, boy, what are we gonna do? I'll put that there. We'll raise our speech up. We're gonna need it. Okay, radio. I don't want this launch music anymore. Get it out of my head. It's in my head. There we go. Ugh. Ugh. Okay, time to leave this place. Mmm, that's not the way out. If I can remember the way out. 
This is it, maybe? Oh, no, but it's a locked door we haven't been in. Oh, come on. There we go. Oh. That helps. Okay. Well, now what? I mean, that was pretty much... Oh, right. We were doing that for someone, weren't we? Like, the whole... Uh, that entire story arc. Who sent you? talking. They tried to get me to talk before, but I didn't say nothing. And I don't aim to now, by gum. By gum. I don't mean any harm. We'll just see about that. You come any closer and I'm liable to stick you with my sticking knife. Old stick is feeling mighty ornery this day. We could talk from this distance. You sure now? It's kind of hard to hear you. Fuck. <sighs> he said you'd stab me. Okay, okay, just speak up a little. It's not so much that they hear you. They got people everywhere, always listening. Why do they call you no bark? Because they know I ain't just barking here. What I say has got bite, because it's the truth. Them quack doctors can say what they want about all the rad scorpion stings that done pierced my skull. I know what I seen. There's been things of a disturbing nature going on at the McBride Corral. Seems every night one of their herd meets a most unnatural death. And always there's holes all over the body. Work of the chupacabra, the livestock vampire, says no bark. But they don't pay no mind. Too many holes, they say, and there's bullets in them. Well, says no bark, we got a chupacabra with an automatic weapon. And that's to make it real quiet. Now they see the predicament we're in. Mm hmm. I come face to face with the chupacabra himself one night, whilst I was investigating whether this gecko was hiding his treasure from me. He was the meanest, ugliest chupacabra you could imagine. Had two heads and fangs down to the ground. Best I could tell, anyways, since when he come up to me, he was invisible. Had himself a blunderbuss. What would rotate and shoot bullets real fast out of a backpack. Never seen nothing like it. Walked right past me having an argument with somebody. But I only saw one chupacabra, so I guess the other fella had to be invisible too. Only more invisible than the other one. If anyone asks, he never spoke. So I picked up an interesting bit of tidbit. Or, never mind. <laughs> Picked up an interesting tidbit of information there. Um, obviously, uh, from his description, they're invisible. They have uh, automatic weapons. Obviously, they are night stalkers, or whatever those uh, blue mutants are called. I believe they're night stalkers. I don't know. It's been a while since I've played this. Kind of like Bioshock 2. But anyway, enough about that. I forgot Moonbark had a quest. Well, he doesn't really have a quest, but, you know... That's not really the point here. Maybe I could talk to more people about it. Like this lady. I hope you're finding it. No. Oh my goodness. I never ran rooms out of strangers. Back in the dino butt. Welcome back. I don't want to buy his rocket souvenirs. That's gross. You have any luck with the ghouls? I'm counting on you. Yeah, I took care of them. Really? Unbelievable, man. I knew that wasn't going to be easy. But I had a good feeling about you. you. Look like you've been through a lot. How about the man I'm looking for? Okay. I'll tell you everything I know, like I promised. The guy you're looking for, Benny, he was traveling with some members from my old gang. They were going to Boulder City. What? No clue. I know Benny hadn't paid up yet. Maybe that was where they were supposed to get square. Where's Boulder City? It's straight up Route 93 from here. Just keep following the road north. That's all I need to know. Hope that helps. I owed you. <laughs> I'm not gonna ask who he is now. Idolized. Renowned for your extensive support and goodwill, you're idolized by the community of Novak. So how you out of that? 
Unfortunately, though, these Night Stalkers seem to be uh, an unmarked side quest of sorts. Hello there. It's good to see a friendly face. I almost took you for a raider. What? Name's Malcolm. Malcolm Holmes. Don't suppose you'd care to trade? I'm missing a few essentials and... Ah, oh, screw this. Lying just ain't in my nature. I'll tell it to you straight. I've been following you for a good bit now. What? Why are you following me? It started off innocently enough. I was traveling, as I often do, and happened to observe you picking up one of those blue star caps. Uh-oh. You didn't show any reaction to it, so I figured you didn't know what you'd gotten your hands on. What's so special about these caps? There's an old wasteland legend that says somewhere out there is a fabulous treasure from before the war. Those caps with the blue star on them, tell goes, are the key to that treasure. They're called Sunset Sarsaparilla Stars. Say that ten times fast. Where can I find... Oh, wait a minute. Huh, what kind of treasure are we talking about? No one knows. Money, weapons, water. It is, or maybe was, something of value. And that's enough to get people motivated. So you collect these two. Nah, I gave it up years ago. Too dangerous. And even if I did still collect them, I'd tell you the same. There's people out there so mad with the idea of treasure that they'll attack strangers just on the suspicion that they have some of those caps. Where can I find more of them? All over the place. The easiest place to find them is unopened bottles of Sunset Sarsaparilla. You'd think they'd all have been picked clean by now. But somehow, new bottles keep appearing in the machines. Some say it's old Festus that does it, hoping someone will finally collect enough caps to earn the treasure. Other than bottles, you'll just have to scavenge. Find caps in the unlikeliest of places, and blue star caps are no exception. Mention someone named Festus. Who's that? It's said that the treasure is guarded by a man named Festus, and he's the one who asked for the blue star caps. It's also said he's been around since the war, standing a lonely vigil, waiting for someone to come and take the treasure off his hands. That'll make him pretty damn old, and I've met a few people in my travels who claim they actually met him, and they weren't the lying type either. Thanks for the info. No problem. If you do end up trying to collect more stars, watch out for a man named Alan Marks. He's killed several people for their stars already. Uh huh. So that's basically how you're supposed to learn more about those blue star caps. And luckily for us, because we've killed. Well, let's just say we've uh, unjustly killed a few people. We, um. have quite a bit more than what I think we're supposed to at this point in the game, but. Let's just say uh, we got him through natural causes. If anyone asks, are these just settlers? Your eyes are huge, lady. I'm out of here. Damn, scary. Uh, dumpster. This is where the cattle are dying. Let's talk to the owner and proprietor of these fine cattle. He's a cowboy. Seems from out of town, ain't you? Name's Dusty. Yeah, see with a name like Dusty, that's how you know he's a cowboy. Uh, I heard you've been losing livestock. Losing don't describe it. Uh -oh. It's a massacre. Do you have days and there won't be nothing left to lose. Tell me what you know about the attacks. Every night around midnight, Alice and I wake up to some crazy hollering and gunshots. You'd think the world was ending all over again. But it's just one animal each night. They don't take it or carve it up or nothing. Just leave it there, all full of holes. Uh, we'll see if I can catch whoever's responsible. We'd be grateful, especially if you find them before they get my whole stock. But don't go getting yourself killed over. Alice and I'll find a way to make do. Always have. Did you get a look at the attack? Beg your pardon, mister, but them two-headed beeves ain't worth getting shot over. Not to mention what would happen if half of what Nobark says is true. Hmm. Best we can hope is that whoever's doing this will move on or get tired of it. I just hope it happens while we still got animals left. Whoever it is, I don't think they're from around town. Seems like they've taken to shooting from the west side. So long. What about your wife? Nope, she's just like... Bleh, bleh, bleh. Okay, so they're attacking from the west side, which means they're attacking from straight ahead, which means we gotta find a perfect position to hold up and watch. Unfortunately, though, I don't think, uh... 
I don't think I'm the watching type, but mm, guess we'll have to go with what we got. Man, look at that unsteadiness. So I guess we do just kind of sit here and wait. I mean, we could read that note he gave us. Uh, Dusty McBride wants you to look to the nightly shootings of his livestock, which he says tend to occur around midnight. Being at the Brahmin pen at that time would seem to be the best way to catch the culprit. What the hell is challenges? Ow! Ooh, a slave obeys. Whoa! That's a reference to Bioshock! <laughs> And there are spoilers in that, so we're not going to watch or look at that ever again. That was pretty cool, though. I did not realize that the first challenge was going to be a reference to Bioshock. That is undisturbably uh, weird. Oh, it's only eight. God damn it. Fine, I'll wait. I'll wait till three, three hours. Okay. Attack around midnight. I think we're ready. I don't see anything yet. Like, I would think I'd be able to see him up in the hills, but I do not. <sighs> this sounds like Oblivion music. Like, it literally sounds like it's ripped right from Oblivion, but I don't know. Maybe that's my mind playing tricks on me. Is it midnight yet? Almost. I don't see anything. Well. I see him now. So we'll just wait here for a little bit. Get him! You're shooting the fence, you ding dong! Come back, you rascally son of a bitch. What the hell? God damn it, I hate it when the game bugs out like this. <sighs> Finally. Well, he did say he wasn't alone, didn't he? Didn't he? I don't know if he did or not. What the hell is that? I guess it's like his liver or something. <laughs> the screams of Brahmin. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. Most of what's recorded here is a mess of incomprehensible psychotic gibberish. It seems to express a general frustration towards a set of Brahmin who are allegedly keeping the author awake at night by screaming inside his head whenever he closes his eyes. What the hell, man? Both to the note and to me hitting escape. Uh, I guess I could tell him now that his problems are over. I killed him. Find anything? You have no idea. Well, I don't know how you've done it, but I do know how I can thank you. Please take this. Compliments of Alice and myself. And help yourself to anything in that freezer over yonder. We got more steaks in there than we'd be able to eat in a year. Well. Oh my god, stop doing that. Then you won't mind me taking, uh... Holy shit. Everything. You guys are broke now. Okay. Anyway. 
Oh, that was fun, wasn't it? I think you get paid more the less amount of livestock you let him kill. I think we lost one right there, but I don't know. We could have not. We could have. I don't know. Anyway. That'll probably be it for today. Man, I'm sorry that lately all my episodes of my LPs have been going over 20 minutes. I haven't been doing that intentionally. But anyway, see you next time. We knew. Bye-bye.